Lori Houston's News for the Heart is dedicated to helping you give a voice to your own soul. Our hearts have the power to free us from pain and the struggles that keep us from awakening to our true essence. Join Lori now as we delve into our heart and soul to find the path that will open us to the possibilities and lead us to the life we love to live. And good afternoon. This is News for the Heart. And wow, it is the last Tuesday of November, which means, well, you've already had all of your holidays. Well, no, <laughs> you've started your holiday season. We started ours in October, so <laughs> a little bit different, but you've had your big holiday. Now we're going into the Christmas holiday or the Yes, we really shouldn't say, well, no, Christmas is now Christmas. It's back to Christmas. We're okay to say that it's politically correct again. <laughs> but it just, I can't believe the year's gone. So it's so fast this year, something weird. It was just, how are we almost December? It's tomorrow. Anyway, welcome to the show, Tom. I thought, Thank you, Lori. I thought we would talk about, well, we always talk about the holiday and I wrote a blog this month and for the holidays and kind of narrowed it down to like three trigger areas that we have. I kind of like the way they labeled the January debt hangover. <laughs> so finances is always something. And it's so ironic because really all we want is memories, but we tend to make ourselves believe that something magical outside of ourselves is going to make us happy. Um, the other thing is we're very much more social, which can be a very good thing for some people, and it certainly can be a good thing for us to grow up, but it's not always easy when we are kind of stuck possibly with the same people over and over or um, the family that knows how to trigger us the best or the friends that, you know, may have other things going on. And so get-togethers, it's kind of a double-edged sword or it can be great it can be terrible and sometimes the last thing um, is depression I think there's a lot of people that get depressed around the holidays I know that suicide rates go up I know that it's a difficult time if people are lonely or not getting what they want we kind of talked about before we started the show is that there's really just the three things it's you know ego fear and beliefs um and we talk about that a lot because that's really what it's all about. This is what we're here. We're trying to help us grow up. And so, yeah, holidays. Yay. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Well, okay. Holidays are always nice. I like holidays. Well, of course, a holiday you like immediately because it is a holiday. It means you don't have to go to work. So. That is always nice for most people who are out there, you know, doing the, the, you know, get up and go to work every day thing, which I'm not, but uh, it's good. It's a day you do not have to go to work, but it's usually not a time when you sit back and, and find a lot of leisure either. Holidays tend to be busy, lots of things to do. And if you're, if you're having people over to your house, then it's doubly busy because you're entertaining and you have to get your house prepared and your hors d'oeuvres and food and drink and all of that takes a lot of work. And then you have to clean it all up afterwards. <laughs> so holidays can be a, a stressful, busy time. I think what happens is that People, you know, there's a there's usually a difference between what we plan and what we think is going to happen and what we want to happen and what actually does happen. You know, and that's true in everything we do. The the real world comes in and imposes all kinds of little details that we just don't think of, things that we're going to have to deal with and figure out you know, what to do with them or how to interact with them. We never really think about that until we get there. I remember when I was doing a lot of programming and people would say, well, how long will it take you to program this? And I'd think, you know, I'd give it my best thought about what I thought it would take. And then I'd multiply it by three. <laughs> and that's, that's what I'd tell them because 
that difference between the world that you envision and the and the real world that actually happens usually ended up taking about three times as long as you know as you thought and th and that's because we tend to th we tend to think of things in terms of well if everything goes right well if this worked and then that worked and then i did this and everything works and then i give it to them and they get to it right away and it worked you know no, so it's going to take this long, but the world doesn't work that way. The world has all kinds of little dead ends and corners and smash ups and problems and issues that you just can't imagine what they're going to be. And I think with the holidays, it's it's much the same way. We have kind of the expectation that we go in with. Oh yes, I'm going to go over to Aunt Susie's, and all the family is going to be there, and I'll. You know, it's going to be a good time. And, you know, we, we think of all that. We get kind of up for it. And then it's not quite what we imagine, you know, because, you know, Aunt Susie's having a real bad backache and, you know, and this and that. And, you know, so-and-so just lost their job, so they're a bit snippy and tense. And, and, you know, we didn't plan on that. And then we get to the real world. And the real world isn't the way we imagined it because our imagination skips all the little nitty-gritty details that uh, that we really don't know about so that's part of it but the thing that's the problem there is the expectation see you, you if you didn't have any expectations if it was just okay i'm gonna you know meet all, meet with all those people and it'll be whatever it is you know, if somebody's grumpy, well, we'll deal with a grumpy person. If somebody's really full of joy and happy, well, we'll deal with that too. You know, if people are totally immersed in politics or whatever else they just can't stop talking about, well, we'll have to deal with that too. You know, and if you go with no, no uh, expectations, and go to your party or to your event or to what you're hosting with just what well, it'll be whatever it is you know and people will come and they will get out of it you know if they're coming to your house and and they'll have a good time not have a good time it'll just be whatever it is and that's okay it's okay for it to just be however it is and if we can get to that point then we're almost never disappointed Matter of fact, we're usually uh, surprised. You know, things turn out to be better than we thought. You know, how many times have you had an event you had to go to? You, know, you had to go to it. And you're thinking, oh, no, I really don't want to go to this thing, you know. Do I really have to? I don't feel like it, you know. I don't feel like got, getting, uh, you know, uh, getting dressed. I don't feel like going out. You know, it's cold. Outside. I just don't feel like going and those times when you feel like that are often the times when you have the best time. You go there and you have a really good time because you didn't go with any expectations of how good it was going to be and how wonderful it would be and all the great things that were going to happen. So when things do happen and you didn't expect it to be much fun, well, now you allow yourself to have fun rather than in your mind complaining and being upset and negative about things didn't happen the way you expected them. So at least I find that's the way it was with with myself and Pamela, you know, we'd have some social event. We're both introverts, you know, social events to us are, are you know, they're, they're not something we run off to and, oh, joy, another social event. We tend to say, oh, another social event we're going to have to go to. But where I was the most grumpy going in or the most negative going in almost always turned out to want to be the ones that were the best and where you had the most fun and the ones that you were kind of anxious and okay this is going to be great can't wait for this event to happen are the ones where you're disappointed and it's it happened almost every time that way so i this is years back so i got to thinking about it and say what's the difference is that just luck you know, is it just lucky when I'm when I go in with a with kind of a blank, no expectations? It turns out to be more fun. And I thought, no, 
It's what you pre-program yourself for. If you if you go to something neutral, I, I don't suggest you go negative, but you just go neutral. You know, it'll be whatever it is, and whatever it is, that's fine. It, it'll you know, it's okay. It's, it's not like it. Well, if it's not like you know, if it's like that, that'll be annoying. If it's like that, I won't like it. Now you're setting yourself up for a negative experience. You just go and say, well, whatever it is, I'll have a good time. I'll be there. I'll interact and see what happens. And when it's time to go, we'll go. Then you tend to have a much better time. And same if you're not going someplace, but people are coming to your house, the same attitude. If you really want everybody to be just really happy and have a wonderful time, and they come, and somebody, like I say, has a backache, and somebody else lost the job, and this and that. Well, the mood's not going to be there necessarily for that fun, you know, zany party you were thinking about. It's just not appropriate this time with those people. And now you're disappointed because you keep pushing on it, trying to make it be that way, and it isn't. Whereas if you just say, hey, it is whatever it is. These are people I enjoy being with. People I don't see very often. Maybe these people will catch up on what's going on in their lives, and it'll be you know it'll be okay. Whatever it is, then it's fun. So that's one thing. Expectations. Don't have any. Try to not have any expectations. And of course, the worst thing for creating expectations is the ego, because the ego wants it to be a certain way. You want to have a certain experience. You want to have fun, and you want you know, the other people to be in support of the kind of fun that you want to have. And it might be, but it might not be. And then you're disappointed. And I think the same thing goes with the whole holiday. It's like, okay, we're going into holiday season. This is going to be fun and family and joy and fellowship. And then you come out the other end and it's like, oh, man, that was a lot of work. True. <laughs> I'm glad that's over. You know, and I think that's part where the depression comes from, because what happened to all that joy? Well, it's, you made all that up in your mind. Like me thinking I could get my programs written in a month. You, know? <laughs> you make that all up in your mind with all the best things you can imagine happening. And then when they don't, it's a downer. So we set ourselves up for our negative experiences often. It's a, you know, there's, there's, um, you know, the way a little thing I, I tell people like here's what life is is should be about stuff happens and you get to deal with it and if you deal with it positively then you'll learn you'll grow you'll be happy and it doesn't matter so much what the stuff is that happens it what matters is how you deal with it that's the important part the what happens isn't that important how you deal with it's important so most of us spend our lives trying to manipulate what happens to be what we want to happen. And we, put it, we get up in our minds what we expect, what we'd like to happen, how this party's going to go, you know. You look like you're getting scratched by a cat. <laughs> I just got scratched. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. So, cat decided it needed just a little bit of attention right now. <laughs> Yeah. But, so that so uh, that is the thing is let whatever happens happens and say you're good you're good with that. What if you go to the party and it's just droll and everybody's mopey and whatever and okay, well if it is then you'll still get to meet people, you'll still you'll still talk a little bit. You maybe you'll just come home early, you know, it won't be that much to stay. And that'll be okay. You see, or if everybody gets up and dances and you know has a really fun time, well, that'll be okay too. You'll do that. Stuff will happen, and whatever happens will happen just spontaneously. When a bunch of people get together, that's what happens. You know, a little collective consciousness gets on going on, and interactions take place, and it happens. And you're just a part of that. Let it happen. However, it does. Be a part of it. Don't try to manipulate it to be the way you want or come in with any idea of it's going to be this way or that way, good or bad. So if you face all of life that way, it doesn't really matter so much what happens. 
Sometimes fun things happen. Sometimes hard things happen. Sometimes terrible things happen. Sometimes joy happens. Sometimes misery happens. But it all just happens. What's important isn't that we have, you know, all joy or that we try to avoid all misery. Just let it happen the way it does and then deal with it in a positive way. And that will free you up from trying to manipulate the world to be the way you want it, which is basically trying to manipulate the world to suit your ego and your beliefs. So I think that's the approach for the holidays that works best, is to just be there up for whatever happens and that you can deal with it. If everybody's grumpy because they've had a bad time or they're worried about the January, uh, you know, uh, lack of funds, yeah, the, the debts or something, well, that's okay. You, know, you can have a more serious get together and still enjoy that if that's the mood. And if the mood's crazy and everybody wants to jump up and down and put lampshades on their head and dance, you know, or do whatever, it's okay too. You can have fun with that. Yeah. So. I think that would avoid a lot of the expectations if you could just accept whatever happens is what happens and be a part of it, whatever that means. That might mean you talk a lot, might mean you listen a lot. Yeah, could be either way. You, know, you just interact with it however you do, whenever it happens. And that's so much easier because now you don't need a plan. You know, <laughs> just go, see what happens. So it, it just simplifies everything, and it, it uh, life is better without you manipulating. And we have this thought that, well, if I didn't manipulate things to come out the way I want, nothing would come out the way I want. Everything would be a disaster. That's wrong. When you stop manipulating things to come out the way you want, you will get more of what you want, not less. And the reason for that is, Everybody else out there is also manipulating. And you think you're a very clever manipulator, of course. Everybody thinks they're very, very clever in the way they manipulate, so subtle and so clever. But other people pick up on that. They know they're being manipulated and prodded and, and nudged to do this or that. And mostly they push back because that's just the way we are. When somebody's trying to push us this way, we push back the other way. So by manipulating people, you really are triggering them to do just the opposite of whatever it is you're trying to get them to do. And if you stop trying to manipulate them, they will like you a lot more and start doing those things you'd like them to do just because your relationship's better. So this idea of, well, I have to make sure I tell the kids this and I tell my wife or husband that so they will do this because that needs to be done. And, you know, you're just out there manipulating everybody to make it work out the way you know it's best. Mm -hmm. Just let that go. Let it, let it work out however it just works out all by itself and see what that is. And then deal with whatever it is positively. If it, wasn't, if it doesn't come out the way you wanted, that's okay. Maybe it came out the way somebody else wanted, and that's good enough. So I think that's an attitude shift that we all need to be aware of. And it's so easy to constantly be making, you know, little comments here and a little push there and a little pull someplace else and just trying to nudge people be the way you know they ought to be, the way that's best for them, of course. Yes. Yeah. So I think if we did that, we'd probably not have all those, those negative things in the holiday. I think we wouldn't have expectations. And we'd probably be more rational with our debt. You know, but you know, giving is a nice thing to get into, but you also have to be aware of when enough is enough. And it's not the stuff that counts, it's the thought behind the stuff that is actually important. And if somebody says, well, you know, I'm obligated to get by you a present. Here it is. 
Yeah, there's not much to that, right? Well, that happens a lot. We just don't say those things. You know, that's going on a whole lot. But nobody says that. But everybody knows it just the same. See, just because you don't say it doesn't mean that nobody notices. A lot of Christmas is that way. Well, you're obligated to buy these people presents. So you do. And you're obligated to spend so much money. And, you know, if these people, you should spend a little more. And these people, well, you know, not so much. And, you know, and it's a, you know, all that gets in the way. It all gets in the way. If, if you think about you're giving something to somebody just because you like them and you think of something that they could use that would make them happy, and you do that, don't have an expectation that they're going to jump up and down with joy or give you that fake, you know, that fake, oh, yes, it's exactly what I wanted. Yes. Another tie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Last time I wore a tie was about 20 years ago. Yes. You know, all that kind of wears thin on people as they do that and as they hear that coming back to them, that also then ends up with kind of a downer. You know, it, it's, it's not the up thing we were expecting. Well, we create that ourselves because of the attitudes that we have about obligation and what we're doing and, and the, the, uh, the exchange is sometimes just very, what, unnatural, very stilted. It's not really people just being together and sharing and having a good time, except for the kids. Of course, the kids are always having a good time. You know, if you're under 12, you know, Christmas is just a lot of fun because you get stuff because you're self-centered at that age, and getting stuff is just magnificent. <laughs> um, you get a lot of stuff that you've been wanting for a long time. That's that's good, but I think it's the adults, it's the adults that that come at the holiday. Unlike children, children come with just full of oh boy, oh boy, we got some stuff. I hope it's like this, you know. But no matter what, they get it, and generally they're pleased and they're happy because it's something new to play with or whatever, and. But we don't come out with that. Well, see what happens. Ironically, I remember as a child, you know, some relatives giving money, and I was like, "Who would want that? <laughs> <I'm> just <laughs> a gift. I don't want money." <laughs> but thinking that's like the worst thing you could get. It's like, mm -hmm. wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and now when you get to, to January, you want all the money you can get. <laughs> yeah, wow, I wish some people had given me some money. <laughs> I could pay off the charge card, you know, come, come January. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it, it's just our attitudes are the problem. Mm -hmm. And it's not everybody else's attitude that's the problem. You know, everybody needs to fix their own attitudes. You can't fix anybody else's attitude. So it's our attitudes and how we approach it. And, uh, you know, I remember one, uh, Christmas when I had people over the Christmas party at, at my house. This was, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago, you know, a long time ago. I did the odd thing is I asked everybody to hand make an ornament oh, nice. and bring it, you know, and you could make it out of tinfoil if you wanted, you know, you could do anything you want. Tinfoil and popsicle sticks would have been fine, you know, just hand make an ornament, something that you don't buy, but that you have to make. And the people had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and uh, um, afterwards, all the ornaments were were put, and everybody wanted to see uh, what the kind of other things that other people had made, and it was kind of fun. And then we all kind of decided that one or two of them were really exceptional, so you know they got a bottle of wine or something, you know, uh, whatever, you know, just some little kind of thing. And everybody had a good time, and and uh, and then a few years later. I tried the same thing again, but it was a different group of people. And this time, oh, that didn't work at all. <laughs> it just bombed completely. <laughs> just bombed. 
people felt like it was, you know, you know, taking too much of their time to ask them to, you know, make an ornament, you know, they could just buy something would be better. And they're busy at Christmas and having to go, having to think something up and do it was an imposition that now was a requirement, you know, and now they had to do it, but they didn't like having to do it rather than the idea of, oh, this will be fun. Let's see what I can make out of uh, wax paper, tin foil, and and uh, you know, popsicle sticks. Uh, so it was just an attitude difference. And then trying to get the people to kind of look over each other's stuff and see which nobody wanted to do that because nobody wanted to say, oh, this one's better than that one. Oh, that would be rude, you know. It was just one was a very loose and fun bunch of young people. I was a graduate student then. And these were all just students. And everybody was just full of fun and having a good time. And it worked great. You know, and the things they brought for ornaments, things that you could, anybody could make just out of what happens to be in your house. You know, none of them were, were extravagant. Right. A couple were really very thoughtful. But most of them were just some things. And some of them were even funny things. But then when it was the older crowd, you know, the adult crowd of people in their 40s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, oh, man, it was... It, uh, it was the worst idea ever. You know, it just didn't work because everybody was so uptight about what they were bringing and what it, would it be seen as something suitable or good enough. And they really didn't want to spend the time. And they didn't want to compare to anybody else's because you know, everybody's, of course, was wonderful. And we won't say that this one's better than that. That wouldn't be nice. And whereas before, People were hooting and hollering and saying, yeah, you know, thumbs down. Oh, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. But everybody was laughing and having a good time. But the older people couldn't do that. They couldn't laugh and have a good time. They were too busy sorting where they stood relative to everybody else. Oh, here's what I brought and these what other people. You know, am I, am I at the top or am I on the bottom? And very conscious about what each other were thinking and feeling and Suddenly, we're in this adult bunch of adults that can't have a good time at a party. You know, they just they just were too consumed with their own thing, with their own game, and where they fit in, and and uh, being polite, and yeah. You know, whereas the bunch of you know, otherwise it's a bunch of twenty year olds, you know, that at the other party, you know, twenty. 20 to 28, you know, and it's just a totally different vibe at those two, even though the, the setup was exactly the same. So yeah. I, that was a, that was kind of a big aha for me. You know, and I, I saw that and I said, geez, I don't want to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good thing. Grow up, become so self, you know, self-focused and, and care so much about what everybody thinks. and. Uh, so, but I think that's the way it is, and that's why we end up not having the fun and the joy over the holidays that we hope we have, because we've grown up to be kind of stodgy people who are very concerned about ourselves and having things the way we want them, and we're very politically correct, but you can't do this and you can't do that, and, you know. No competition, and everybody wins, and nobody ever loses. And you know, we've got this this culture that basically hems us in to this very, I don't know, sterile interaction. Yeah. Whereas before, yeah, there were people who you know brought ornaments that were just funny, yeah, you know? just things that were goofy, just meant to be goofy. You know, it would make people laugh, and and some people thought, oh, that's really was a great idea. And others said, hey, that was stupid. What did you bring that for? But it wasn't insulting. You know, it was all fun. Everybody in, enjoyed it. The, the one that brought something that was stupid, I knew it. And that was part of what was fun about it, you know. It was about a bottle cap with a wire on it or something like that, you know. Right. And it was just for fun. Right. So, 
Yeah, that's part of part of our problem is we all become adults, <laughs> and we have political correctness, and we are very concerned that things happen the way we know they should. And everybody is watching everybody else and watching themselves, and it, events become choreographed almost. You know these social settings, and you walk away from that feeling kind of, you know, yeah, yeah. It's not a, it's not a good feeling. To have fun, you have to relax. You have to open yourself up. You have to laugh. You have to, you know. Just not take yourself so seriously. So that's the, that's part of our problem in holidays is we're all adults in a culture that really doesn't know how to have fun. That's true. Yeah, we've we've lost. You know, our culture's kind of lost what's fun. We we we're too serious. That's true. <laughs> we kind of have. Those expectations of, yeah. I, it's interesting how you talked about manip manipulation because I think there's a lot of people that just, you say that and they're going, oh, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of people that say that, but everybody does that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the ladies probably more than the gentlemen, but the gentlemen all do it as well. Everybody, everybody is doing that. They want things to come out the way they want. I mean, it's subtle. It's not like you, you know, force people or, or, or a hard sell, but you just make little comments and say things and, and, uh, just to put just a little pressure, just a little nudge there to get that done because you want that done because you think that should be done. And that's high on your list, but it may not be so high on their list. So you have to prod them a little bit. And people go through life that way. That's this adult thing I'm talking about, where you, you, you know, you look at everybody and you try to orchestrate, you know, what's going on and how everybody's going to, going to be and feel and do. And of course, everybody knows that they know how everybody else should be. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, it's the the manipulation, and it's not serious manipulation in the sense you're trying to manipulate somebody out of their money or something. You know, it's, it's just you're trying to have things happen the way you know they should, mm -hmm. the best way. <laughs> but every single individual has their own best way, and they're all manipulating each other to try to make that best way happen. And then they all are kind of put down because it just doesn't seem to work. And then that's frustrating. You know, they've been trying and trying to get this person to behave in a certain way, and it's just not working. So now they get maybe angry or throw up their hands and give up. There's no point. So relationships start to fall apart. But nobody's really communicating. Everybody's just trying to be subtle, you know, and manipulate everybody else. And and uh, uh, it's... We humans are strange, are strange creatures. You know, we, uh, we create a, a society and a culture that basically requires us to not be ourselves, requires us to live to an image. And because we're in this little image all alone inside our, our head and the rest of that world out there is the world that needs to be manipulated by us, you know, it's kind of a lonely place to be. We're not really connected to other people. We're all moving around, interacting, going to social events, but it's all about me and how do I look and how do people do me and what about those other people and are they nice to me or are they not nice to me and if so, why? And, oh, you know, the whole thing is all going on up here with the, with the fear and the ego and whatever and the intellect sitting and turning on that crank all the time and nobody's having a whole lot of fun except for the kids because the kids aren't grown up yet, so they don't really care about all that stuff you know they kind of are what they who they are they say what comes to them they uh they're uh, a lot more open and straightforward but their culture squeezes that out of them and tell them not to not to act like that you have to be aware all the time of 
of uh, other people and what you need to do in order to manipulate them to do what you need them to do. <laughs> yeah, it's even a mouthful to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I know it's uh, it, it just comes up and gets worse around holidays because that's when we're all thrown together in social situations. You know, as long as you are an individual living out of your head and, and you know, in your own little your own little island that kind of goes around and bumps into other people's little islands. That's not too bad if it if you're not in social situations, but the social situations throw us together where everybody's is is in this space of assessing each other and what you need to do to make the other people be better. And it's not fun for anybody. <laughs> no. You come home from a party and you're tired. Exactly. You know, it's like you've been working the whole time. <laughs> presenting an image. Yeah. 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 But if we could just, like kids, come together, be ourselves, and have fun. Oh. But look at the risk. You might say something that then other people wouldn't like or they would think less of you. So you have to be careful that you don't say those things or act that way. So, you see, that's all this, this ego and image, the beliefs we have. Yeah, that's the fear. It's the fear of not fitting in, not getting it right, not being accepted, not being politically correct, or in this case, socially correct. <laughs> I mean, being polite's nice. It's the lubrication that makes social things work. We need to be polite, but that doesn't mean we have to be stiff. Right. You know, kind of cardboard cutouts of our, of our image. We just kind of move our image through the social scene. We're at work the whole time. Yeah. yeah, just be who you are, be authentic, have no expectations, and go see what happens. Don't worry so much about what other people think. Be nice to people, be kind to people, but, you know, if, if, you're, if you are yourself and some people find that offensive, so they want to go, you know, they want to not be around you, I'd say that's a win. You don't want those people around you. If you're being yourself and they find you offensive, go find other friends. You know, you need to have friends where you can be yourself and be accepted and be part of a, you know, a pleasant, positive group. So if you just are yourself, and that means some people won't like you, go away then. You're not the kind of people I want to hang out with. Eventually, you'll find other people who can just be themselves, and you can be yourselves, and you all can kind of have fun together. Then that's your crowd. You know, those are the people you should you should uh, be with. And the people who are stiff and stodgy and complain all the time, well, nobody really wants to be with those people. You know, maybe they'll learn a lesson if that happened. You know, if we were all just honest and straightforward, not to be rude, but just to be honest. I think we do better. So there's at least a few things about holidays that a uh, different perspective, I guess, than we normally take. Yeah. One of the biggest problems we have is being adults <laughs> in a culture, in, in a culture that has this political and social correctness that we have to uh, abide by. Yeah. Yeah, it's gotten tricky. <laughs> you just never know, right? <laughs> it's like, right, so the best thing to do is just be quiet. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't laugh too much. You know, don't, don't say much of anything. Keep, the, keep all the conversation real, real shallow. You know, just <laughs> talk about things that don't really matter to anybody. And uh, that way you're safe. <laughs> yeah. 
doesn't make for much fun, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. It's just an interesting time. I, I love the holidays, but the expectation there, I can feel it sometimes when I, it's like, I do, I love the holidays. I love the social parts. I love, I don't know, just the interactions are different. People are generally more friendly and jovial. They're just, it's just whether it's real or not is the question, but people, you know, tend to be more, they tend to be more happy during the holidays just because they might be off work or whatever, but they're, you know, it's, you know, you see kids, they tobogganing and you might not see that your place, but here <laughs> we have tobogganing and skating and, you know, we have a lot of fun things that we can do outside and create more memories and, and that's always fun and even even shopping can be fun if you're just if you're not you know ripping something out of somebody else's hands or whatever that happens but you know if we're just doing it just for the enjoyment of no giving I guess of course, we all like giving things to kids. Yes. Yeah, that that's fun. Everybody, everybody likes to give kids presents because kids are so natural, and you know, I mean, they want so many things. <laughs> you can always find something that is just really, really uh, great for them and exciting for them. And adults, when when adults want something, they go buy it. True. So the adults are a lot harder to, you know, to. Uh, Give presents to, and it's hard to find something that they really need that's really going to help fix their life and make things easier for them. Because if there was something like that, they all you know, they already bought it. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's, you know, I think that you know, particularly Christmas, really is more about kids. Mm. You know, in a way, you know, a lot of the joy is around the children. You know, and of course for Pamela, that's the grandchildren. You know, because we have children and grandchildren, but uh, our children are adults now. They're in their middle, middle to late thirties. So, so yes, lots. Yeah, kids, kids are the fun. You know, you you buy things for kids, and you put things for them that you know they'll need because they don't really have much money that they can spend on themselves. They almost depend on other people. You know, buy them things. So. That's, I get a lot of joy out of paying attention to the children at Christmas and the grandkids and watch them and I, I, I yeah. enjoy their excitement and I enjoy their giggles and their laughs and their joy and that sort of stuff. Of course, you know, we may be, you know, teaching them to be, you know, <laughs> stuff centered. Yeah, you know, it's all about the stuff, you know, it's all about the presents and that kind of thing. But, um, well, it's a nice time when kids get presents. I don't know. I just like that. I think that's the that's the fun part of Christmas for me. Just their excitement. And joy the other thing is, is just seeing seeing my my family, seeing my kids. You know, okay, they're adults now, but I just really enjoy hanging out with them and talking with them and finding out you know what's going on with their life and in their jobs and in their social circles and just sitting around chatting with my kids and their, you know, their significant others, their, their husbands or wives. And that's to me something that I don't get to do very often because they're living their life. We live our life. And yeah, the two meet every once in a while for short periods of time, but basically everybody's busy doing their own thing. So on the holidays, we spend just hours hanging out talking about whatever we feel like talking about. And I find it interesting. I find it fun. It's, you know, that's kind of my Christmas. I don't go to big parties. I don't do things like that. You know, Pamela and I really like to dance, and we miss that because there's not a whole lot of things going on when you're retired. You know, there's, there's not like retired people's dance, you know, or something like that. Besides, <laughs> we, we dance. 
more like they danced in 60s and 70s so we're more you know we're more wild and crazy on the dance floor than most of the young kids are <laughs> but, uh, oh, look at those old people yeah. but in any case uh, so we i miss that part of the social scene but uh, other than that just hanging out with 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 my family is to me what it's you know what i look forward to because otherwise they they don't that often well they do maybe three or four or five times a year they just come over and we hang around and talk but it's usually around a holiday you know it's usually thanksgiving or fourth of july or you know christmas or new year's it's because that's when everybody's off work that's when everybody has free time so i like holidays they're uh, just a lot of a lot of fun hanging around with people you like people you love so we don't do big the last few years that we've had <laughs> it's kind of nice yeah. that we're now more we can be social in person <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not right. online <laughs> yeah that's true it has been a little tough for the yeah i got a little grand girl in uh, california that i haven't seen now for almost three years so we're going out next month we're gonna we're gonna go out and, and uh, get reacquainted well, maybe two years it's been it's been a long time way longer than it's you know than it should be but california is a long way off and, <laughs> and covid didn't make traveling by airplane very attractive still not all that attractive but it's better than it better than it was so yeah, I think that's the biggest thing that we've noticed this year is that people are getting together again. Like everybody's doing it in person and getting together. And I think that makes it, it definitely makes a difference. I mean, <laughs> online, you could certainly ignore some people, <laughs> the ones that you don't want to, but, you know, the ones that you actually want to spend time with that you haven't seen in a while, it's yeah. nice to get in person again. It's, it's the missing. Yeah contact is was a big deal so it is nice yeah. that people are doing that again yeah i think so too i think it's interesting this is maybe off the subject but a lot of people who thought oh this is really hard trying to work at home now they're saying oh no you want me to go back into the office <laughs> no <laughs> i want to work from home so that that turned around for a whole lot of people, uh, 180 degrees. They realized the the freedom they had to to organize their day and their time in a way that suited them, as opposed to suited you know their company. And uh, I think a lot of people are struggling to maintain that that uh, you know, work from home time because it really is. I did a lot of work from home even before work from home was a thing because i was a consultant and consultants often don't have desks and offices you know they you work out of your home a lot and i loved it because it's so much more efficient and you can get so much more work done put me in a room full of people and i can't do that much work because people are always interrupting and always talking and always doing other things your attention's always drawn someplace else but I'm I'm at home, and I can focus and concentrate. I can get more done in three hours than I could get done, you know, in half a day at work, maybe even the whole day, because I'm real focused. I don't get interrupted. Um, you know, I have all the things I need at my fingertips, and I can get into things much more deeply and stay there longer than I ever could at an office. So I find it very helpful. Of course, I don't. I didn't have a lot of little toddlers running around either because that that makes a big difference. My kids were, you know, what, ten and up, so that made a that made a big difference. But I like the having the freedom. Definitely, right there so. with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's funny. But that's good. That's kind of changed our culture. You know, we we don't look at work the same way that we we did. It's kind of it's changed us quite a bit. The COVID thing 
doesn't just go away and leave us like we were. It leaves us changed. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of companies are still have chosen not to reopen some of those big offices. Mm -hmm. So it is interesting. Yeah. Well, they found out it was a lot more cost effective for them because their people could work well at home and did work well at home. Why should they be paying for a very expensive office building and, you know, all the expenses that goes with, with making spaces for people to come in to the office? And it's just a, a new idea. People always had to go into the office so they could communicate with each other, but now they can communicate with each other from anywhere in the world yeah. at any you know any time that they agree upon it. It, uh, it's a different world, yeah. and we're just beginning to take advantage of of it. Well, we're off the subject though, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, back to. <laughs> Yeah, it happens. <laughs> we just yeah. let it flow. We're, we have no expectations mm -hmm. on the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know that's that's true. We do just kind of wander around wherever it, wherever it takes us, and uh, I guess it's taken us pretty much to the top of the hour, hasn't it? It has actually. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So leaving with a message of I don't know. It's kind of let the holidays happen. <laughs> Yeah, just let them happen. Enjoy them. Be a part of them. Don't don't stay out of it. You know, don't stay home. Get out there and socialize, and not just in holidays, but you know, socialization is where we learn. That's where most of our lessons are. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's where you have to react to somebody else. And how do you react? And you react positively, and you react with a smile and, and be happy with the interaction? Or does that interaction make you grumble and make you say, mm, they don't know what they're talking about. Mm, what's the matter with them? They're so dumb. You know, are you complaining and fussing with the interaction? So it's people. You know, if you just stay home, you know, get in the closet and just stay there, you know, there's very little learning going on you know, as far as your interactions. So getting out there and mixing it up with people is, is where we grow up. We just have to do that and stay happy, stay positive, stop reacting negatively, stop complaining, stop you know, needing things to be the way we want it, the way you know we're not the master of the universe. We need to let other people be who they are. Whether that's dysfunctional or not, it's not our thing. It's not our call. They're dysfunctional. It's their thing to deal with and not ours to help fix them. Mm -hmm. You know, we just have to, to get out there, be social, and be positive with it. As soon as we have a negative emotion and, like, we start complaining about somebody or what they said or what they did or how they're doing it or anything else, then, you know, you're not learning. You're you're doing it wrong. You know, that's not evolutionary. That's de-evolutionary. Oh, look at her. Look how she's wearing her hair. That's awful, isn't it? You know? Oh, look at this. Look at that. Those people should be, you know, people sometimes that's all they do say. They never say anything else other than complain or fuss or point out how other people are wrong. <laughs> In fact, I had an interesting, uh, you know, I, see, I, my hair is shorter than it was last time we talked. And, I got a haircut about two or three weeks ago, and I sat down in the chair, and this, this lady, real nice uh, young lady, uh, she was talking about uh, wanting to change jobs, change professions. She liked cutting hair, but that just wasn't making it as a career. You know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to uh, live the life she wanted to live with that as her sole income. And she was just talking about what it is she liked to do, and she said, what she really liked to do is to tell other people why they're wrong. <laughs> oh, that was lovely. <laughs> That's what she says. She said, what I really like is to tell people how they're wrong. Wow. 
And I thought, well, you need to get a job in quality control. <laughs> you need to get a job in uh, maybe uh, you know, systems engineering, you know, where you basically have structures and paths and the whole system has to flow through those. And when it doesn't, then you get energized and you go out and fix it. You know, I said, there, there are things you can do that kind of fit that, but it just hit me as a very interesting thing to say if you you know what it is you like to do and i thought now here's a lady who really does understand herself she knows where who she is what she is she's being very authentic she's sharing that authenticity with me you know and that is what she likes to do she likes to tell other people what they're doing wrong she likes to help other people get fixed Wow. So, you know, I, I, I enjoyed that. We had, we chatted, you know, through the whole haircut and, uh, I found it a very pleasant, uh, uh, conversation, but I hardly ever run into people who are that honest, who are that, uh, real. Yeah. Yeah. At, um, even that self aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, not exactly, you know, maybe the best attitude to have, but it was her attitude and she had it and she was working with it. And there are jobs where, you know, you, you kind of do that. Sure. And, and, uh, I gave her some suggestions of things that, uh, she might, you know, go into where, where that would uh, work for her. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, she didn't mean it in any kind of a negative way, but she just realized that that is what she does all the time and she enjoys that well that's the you know that's the, the the manipulative idea you know you 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 manipulate others you fix others and the mistakes they make and you point them out and help them do better mm -hmm. you know, well maybe you'd be a counselor you know maybe you'd be a, you know become a psychologist and become a counselor but it just was almost startling to get such a clear, honest, um, Want. true, yeah, vision of somebody talking about, you know, what I like to do is tell other people, you know, <laughs> how they're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my thought was, yeah, you know, most people feel that way, but nobody ever says that. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you, girl. At least you, you, you know what you like. Yeah. So I thought I was, I, I enjoyed talking with that young lady. That's funny. Yeah. It, uh, I said, that's probably what most everybody really likes to do because you know, it makes people feel good. It makes people, you know, it, it, that, that, you know, energizes the ego, right? I know they don't. I can help them. And the ego feels really good about that. Well, you do feel good if you can help other people. It's whether or not they want your help. You help them anyway. You know, that's the problem. Yeah. But she didn't say that. She just, you know, just enjoyed telling people why they were wrong. <laughs> oh, <that's great. laughs> so, so, you know, I found that a, a, a lovely, uh, I enjoy, I like the girl. I, she did it. She's real good at cutting hair. She was excellent. Very skilled. And uh, I'm kind of looking forward to the next, you know, six months from now, a year from now, when I get my next haircut. Wow. I hope she's still. I hope she's still cutting hair and <laughs> not turned into an engineer or uh, <laughs> oh, a, a counselor. Anyway. Well, I wish everybody a happy holiday. Uh, yeah, me too. Enjoy. This Christmas and New Year's, go out there and meet people, have fun, no expectations, just, and maybe having fun is something simple as just having a conversation. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be fun as defined by our culture. Big belly laughs, you know, that doesn't have to be the fun. If you're positive, you will have fun because fun 
it's kind of the side of positive. Positive people have fun all the time. If you're negative, negative people never have fun. They're too busy complaining and seeing what's wrong with everything. So that's another way of looking at this. You know, if you're positive, you will have fun. And if you're not having fun, it's probably because you're negative. <laughs> there you go. All right. You've been listening to News for the Heart. We've been getting to the heart of what matters with Tom Campbell. And I don't know. I think it's going to be, you know, letting the holidays happen. <laughs> All right, we'll be back next month, and it will be the end of the year. Oh, my goodness. So I don't know what we'll talk about, but probably New Year's resolutions or something like that. <laughs> something like that. Something like about, that. About all that money that we now have to pay uh, you know, in January. We can talk about that. Yeah. All right. Take care. We'll see you next month. Sure.